I know, but we had to delete that person. <laughs> we <laughs> deleted it? <laughs> Did you actually guys, delete it? This is garbage. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Darcy. <laughs> this is the word podcast. <laughs> Worst podcast ever, you guys. Again, Josh Delaney's <laughs> here. It's freaking not the rule. <laughs> Welcome to the Busy Girl's Guide to the Bible podcast. I'm Andrea, and this podcast is my own ramblings and lessons that I have learned in trying to balance being a Christian, a wife, a mom, a writer, a business owner, a photographer, a blogger, a friend, a daughter, a sister, and the one million other things that make me me. What I want so badly is to teach other women that the Bible doesn't have to be confusing or frustrating or even over your head. I want to teach you the ways that I have learned to carve out time not only to get into the Bible, but to apply it, make sense of it, and get practical takeaways in everyday life. So I was really interested to know um, when I first met Darcy and started getting to know her better that she dealt with a lot of shame in high school. And it's kind of, let me back up and tell you that if you don't know Darcy, you need to get to know her because I literally told her mom, (laughs) I literally told her mom last week that she is someone who, first of all, she's got this like amazing body and she's super beautiful. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) She's so wonderful. And every time I'm around her, I just like, I leave like walking on a cloud. You know, that's how I feel. So shut up. She's amazing. So true. She's amazing. She's Incredible. amazing. She's so awesome. <laughs> so we like Darcy. Right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we are. So this is a sweaty room. Not in a hot way. <laughs> but what I love about Darcy is that she dealt with some stuff and she has come back from it. And I feel like she is one of the most confident, just like positive, self-possessed people that I've ever met. So if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about Mm -hmm. like what you experienced in high school or in college or however that worked out, just tell your story. Okay. So, um, I don't know, I guess in high school, I, I went to a private school and we had a dress code and I never really followed followed it. it. (laughs) (laughs) So I think that's where it first started as far as like the shame goes is I definitely felt like. I don't know, I'm just kind of like a bad Christian because I didn't dress the way that they told me to dress. And I mean, if we're being polo polo shirts, I had a button down on my polo. (laughs) What? We actually didn't have a dress code, like uniforms. We had like a dress code. Yeah, same. We didn't. We didn't. We just had normal clothes that were supposed to be modest, but I guess mine weren't. So I definitely got shamed for the way that I dressed in high school. Um, and then I think just the way my personality is, is they kind of just pushed me to do worse things. Cause it was like, oh, well, if you think this is bad, let me show you, you know, <laughs> like really. So I think that's kind of the initial push. And then I just kind of just went off from there. <laughs> um, yeah. So as far as like dressing goes, I definitely got shamed in high school and then as we went into college and I started sleeping around I definitely I would think I put more shame on myself because I wouldn't really tell anyone what I was doing you know like who are you gonna tell (laughs) besides your friends yeah um who are all doing everything the same thing yeah so Mm -hmm. it's like I'm never gonna I never told my mom or dad I don't think when that happened um but yeah, I lost my virginity in high school and then moved to college. It just gets worse and worse. And honestly, like, it took a long time for me to realize that it was even okay for me to, like, ask God for forgiveness. Because I just thought, well, you screwed up and I ruined your marriage. And that just sucks for you, you know? So then I was like, well, I already ruined it. So I might as well just keep ruining it because who cares? It's at this already point. gone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can't get that back. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then in college, when I was a sophomore, I wanted to go live in um, a different country and work at an orphanage. And I almost couldn't go because some rumors or not rumors <laughs> got around and people were just telling the owners about um, 
what they thought of me, really. And a lot of it wasn't true. Some of it was. But they pretty much tried to have this intervention with me, and I didn't even know them at the time. They called me and had this, like, intervention. It was extremely awkward. (laughs) And they pretty much said, like, we've heard all this crap about you. You can't come because we don't want you here. (laughs) And I was thinking the whole time, like, I'm going to go and get healing there, and it's going to be awesome. But they wanted me to come as, like, this perfect person. But we worked through it, and I ended up going, and it was very healing. And I discovered a lot there. It wasn't, like, the perfect experience, but um, I definitely learned a lot and grew a lot. Yeah, and then I think I'm trying to, like, even remember where my breakthrough really came. But um, I don't know if there was ever, like, a moment, but I definitely was not good in college. I just continued on my path. And I think uh, maybe in RSM, I started realizing, like, you can get redeemed from that. And even though, obviously, you can't get your virginity back, like, God is so redeeming, and He just loves His kids. He's such a good daddy. So He wanted to redeem that. And um, I don't know if you ever did, like, the soul tie thing. Mm-hmm. Do you guys know yeah, what I'm talking about? I did. Okay, so there's, like, this prayer that you can, like, cut soul ties. Or yeah. <laughs> um, so I would pray that, like, all the time. <laughs> like, literally all the time. But Every so day good. for, like, yeah, that is forever. Awesome. And I think... I finally just started realizing, like, this isn't something that's shameful. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's sin, and that sucks, and you have to ask for forgiveness and um, be redeemed from that. But the good thing is, sin is sin. And so it's not like God thinks because you do one thing, like, because you lie, you're on a different, like, level than Mm -hmm. people that sleep around or drink a lot or murder. (laughs) Like literally all sin, in my opinion, all sin, God thinks all sin is equal and you just have to ask for forgiveness and he's a good dad. I don't know. I love the soul tie thing too, because it's not like just connected to sleeping around. It's like if you have an unhealthy relationship or friendship or like things that have happened in your past, like you literally cut that at the soul tie and Mm -hmm. it's done like it doesn't have to be a sexual thing and I love that because I think I've had to cut soul ties with so many different people and it's not always been about like you know my cousin or whatever or like Mm -hmm. you know anything it's it's a soul tie any soul tie is you can cut and I love I just love that picture of it being like cut one and done and severed yeah yeah I like that that's really cool the best part about this podcast is the stuff that you're not hearing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. So much that's what she said. So I wanted to share a little bit about my story because it's my podcast and I do what I want. And I wanted to, honestly, the reason that I wanted to even talk about sex is because of this conversation that I had with a couple of people talking about the shame that they brought into marriage dealing with sex because if you waited, then you went from zero to 60 overnight. You were not allowed to touch each other. You weren't allowed to think impure thoughts about each other. And suddenly it's a free for all, get freaky, be a sex kitten. And so for a lot of people, thank you. (laughs) I am funny. I'll be here all night. Um, For a lot of women, rather, uh, they come into marriage with this super backwards thinking where, wait, can you hear the nor'easter coming in? (laughs) Uh, where they have to turn the switch on and off uh, immediately. And it's really not fair. And I, what I want so badly, and my husband would probably disagree, is I want my daughter, when she goes into marriage, to understand, like, sex is really awesome and beautiful and can be so incredibly healing and amazing in a marriage if you are willing to... Good Lord, your knees are creaking. <laughs> Uh, if you're willing to, uh, you know, have the conversation before you get married, talk about what sex looks like, talk about uh, what God intended it for and how he meant it to be. And I mean, even in the very beginning of the Bible in Genesis two, it talks about, you know, bone of my, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, name her woman. She was made after man. Uh, A man will leave his father and embrace his wife and they will become one flesh and they were naked and they felt no shame. And I find it really interesting that one of the very first emotions or uh, things that they take on in the garden is shame. So 
for them, it was this incredible intimacy that they had with the Lord and with each other. And the second that all of that fell apart, they felt shame. And I, I don't think it's a coincidence that that's like what we deal with now. I think that's really apropos, honestly, because that's from the garden, from the fall, like that's where all of that came from. So that's where I came from is shame. I just felt like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have so sorry, mom. I shouldn't have sexual feelings. Like I shouldn't be, I shouldn't have these these desires or anything. It was, we were told uh, from an early age uh, that it was wrong, that it was bad and that we weren't supposed to feel this, but that's garbage. So let me just tell you that if you are feeling shame or you felt shame or brought that into your marriage, girl, break it off because that's absolute ridiculous garbage. The Lord like actually made you a sexual being, which would never tell my children that, but <laughs> <laughs> they can know that that's how their mom is. Oh <laughs> but that's how we were created. Like God made us for that intimacy with, uh, our, with our spouse. And I think there's something so amazing and beautiful. About that. <laughs> so sorry. I have the dorkiest friends. <laughs> <laughs> so coming into my marriage, I hadn't, fooled around or anything or messed around with any anyone and so going from like I said zero to 60 overnight was a little bit crazy um but I think over time what was cool is that we got to we got to talk about it and that's let's just be honest like talking about sex is super awkward right 100 mm-hmm. especially with your husband especially Why with your spouse like, it's so weird know. but it is it's super awkward and it's uncomfortable and especially like talking about what you like or what you want that just feels like, Hey, just so you know, you're missing the mark. (laughs) That's what she said. Um, (laughs) but literally I think the cool thing is, is that as you, as you grow and it, there was this really awesome verse that I super wrote down somewhere. Oh, it was the one that I shared earlier. Proverbs five. Uh, why would you trade enduring intimacies for cheap thrills with a whore? Um, but I think that's really cool because it's, it's telling us like, this is going to get, really awesome. It's going to get really sweaty Mm -hmm. and like, it's going to be way better than just like a one night stand or anything. And I think that's because as you grow and you change, you go, okay, whoa, stop doing that. Don't do that. (laughs) Move over here. And I think it's really cool that you get to do that. You don't, you can't tell a one night stand like, bro, stop it. (laughs) That's gross. But you can with your husband. You can just be like, stop, stop, stop pull back. (laughs) Um, but I think what is so amazing about all of this is that even through all of these stories, as crappy as they were, and as I'm so sorry about your cousins, as crappy as your cousins were (laughs) and whatever history we come out of this with, we get to start fresh every single day with our husbands. We get to, we get to say, okay, this is the old stuff. Like, let's start here. Let's be honest with each other let's be open with each other and let's talk about sex baby (laughs) (laughs) so this is the awkward part where we're going to tell you how to have super good sex because we're sex (laughs) birds get it (laughs) so i'm going to ask you awkwardly and then i'll never be able to look at you guys the same way again (laughs) what is a an amazing mind-blowing orgasmic tip for the listeners to make yourself sex life better. Anybody's up for, Oh, uh, uh, I'm like, okay. Okay. (laughs) Honestly, I think a huge part of it is talking to your spouse, telling them what you actually enjoy and what you, what actually makes you feel good because as awkward as it is at first, actually telling them like, Hey, you did it awesome last night <laughs> or I love <laughs> this position or throw me up against that dang wall always whatever it is <laughs> yeah like letting them know what turns you on oh girl you will be turned on then the <clears throat> next time because let me tell you that guy of yours he wants to turn you on because by turning you on that turns him on and that was something I had to learn the more noise you make the more you are into it, the more feeling you give that. He wants to bling, bring you, 
He wants to bling you. He wants you. to bling you. Yeah. <laughs> Do I get diamonds out of he this? He wants <laughs> to bring you pleasure. That is what makes these oh. men excited and happy and feeling fulfilled and feeling loved and feeling like they are important. Um, it, it just really just... I don't know. It shows them true love, knowing that they can fulfill you. So if you are telling them um, exactly what it is that you want, that's what they want to hear. They don't want to guess. I think that's the same for us, though. Like, if you can make your husband's toes crawl, like, yes, oh, absolutely, yes, yeah, totally. What about Jump you on it. <laughs> I mean, um, honestly, I've only been married for like three months, that's so okay. I'm. I know, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around the whole thing because because I know I've messed up already but I'm still trying to realize that sex being married is blessed it's weird I don't know because <laughs> I've grown you like literally yeah. you go through life up till now and it's like you're not supposed to do it so now we're doing it but now you just have to wrap my head like this is okay I don't have to like hide it, you know, like we're yeah. allowed. Yeah. So it's just weird. It's like a weird shift. And of course, everyone's asking for babies and whatnot. And so it's like, oh my God, everyone Don't knows. Don't do it. Everyone knows we're doing it. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. It's like so strange. So then what is a tip to make it less awkward or to like get in the groove faster? I mean, I don't know if we like, if I have really like tips. <laughs> I'm still learning, but, um, I don't know. I've been like trying to challenge myself to just like be very honest. Yeah. And when I'm in the mood, just like straight up say, let's go, you know, instead of like make it awkward and like tiptoe around it. I feel like just being really direct has helped, but I don't know. It's new still. (laughs) So that was one of the really awkward things is I really hope my mom isn't listening. Um, is that, uh, my husband would be like, can you just like every once in a while, just initiate it. And I'd be mm-hmm. like, no, it's your job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I was, mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I was taught yeah. like, no, yeah. you don't initiate, like let the dude like pursue you. But yeah. well, yeah. But I mean, when you're dating, right, that's their job is to pursue. But mm-hmm. then when you're married, like you it's are still their job. It, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like it's more level. Yeah. It's more level. Yeah, definitely. Because you're one now. Right. So you both should be excited. And I actually keep t- telling my husband, like, baby, what's mine is yours. Yeah. <laughs> We're sharing bodies now. Okay? Oh, yeah. Like, let's my husband just has share no bodies. problem telling me, like, those are my boobs. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? Because right now they're my, my 10 month olds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, motherhood. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so fun. <laughs> uh, what about you, B? Um, I was just going to say, like, let him be the man because, like, isn't he already a man? Well, I know, but I'm just saying, like, let him, like, if he's, like, in the leading part, you know, just, like, let him do his thing and, like, let him be the boss, kind of. Because, like, I think sometimes I can, which, obviously, if you know me, like, sometimes I can be the boss, but I love my husband <laughs> <Totally>. so much. <laughs> and he's, We're like, the, shaking our, like, the our heads. hottest yep. thing you've ever seen. And he's if you know right. me, you know that I think that about him. <laughs> but when I see him, like, lead in, in that kind of a role, not just in the bed, but, like, in life in general, I just want to encourage him and, like, te- like you know, be there Teach for him. him. <laughs> <laughs> like, be there for him. So, I don't know. I just think, and practice makes perfect. So, Keep trying until you, yes, Yes. until you get it right. And then when you have kids, it adds a fun new later because then you have to get tricky and do (laughs) different things or different time zones or like, it's just, it gets fun and just enjoy it. Like sneaking around is so fun. Yeah. (laughs) But seriously, just like having fun with it because he's your only one. So why not just enjoy it and like, I don't know, love every second of it. So I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I think um, once you make it like perfunctory, like, yeah, having sorry, kids, <laughs> perfunctory. I'm sorry, is that in a word you don't know? <laughs> Do you need a dictionary? Me <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm you always. guys, you just need to know that my friends are really pretty. <laughs> uh, once it becomes a chore, you know that word? Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Which it did when we were tra- when you know, in the middle of miscarriages and I was like, okay, we have to do this right now. Mm. Even though my mom's in the other room. Hey, the Maddie yeah. was conceived. So praise the Lord. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you have to make it fun and not this 
chore. And I think too, like it's so easy to be like, nope, I'm tired or nope. I have yeah. to fold the laundry. I do that <clears> sometimes. Brittany. I know. <laughs> Guys, I'm tired sometimes. I don't care. I have sex. I know. And also I'm totally speaking to myself here, but lingerie girls, I know it's really a pain because you put on this lingerie, you wear it for like two seconds, and it get ripped, it gets ripped off. And they say, "Oh, I just like you naked." No, they like those random strings in places. <laughs> oh my god, they do. And they like seeing you. It's like this undiscovered territory, even though they've legit discovered it many times. It's still exciting. Like so Columbus. yeah, it, yeah. it is. So hey, put on that little tiny skirt or that thong or whatever it is and and legit talking to myself here let them let them are you giving yourself a, a bit of fantasy I totally am because I'm like cool I'm in my like Come. nasty like <laughs> rainbow pants and t-shirt literally like, hey, what I'm sitting in now this. like yeah. I don't know why my husband doesn't find these sexy <laughs> But yeah, maybe maybe take off the nursing bra every once in a while and put a real one on. You know, I mean it helps. And just shameless plug here because you guys know I love Amazon fashion. You can find really good stuff on Amazon for like super cheap. If you're only gonna have it on for two minutes and it's gonna get ripped off, then legit. Mm-hmm. Don't spend a lot of money. Or just wear yoga pants. Like for nope. some reason, yoga I've pants. Oh, no, yeah, wear yoga pants. <laughs> <and> <laughs> loves like, yoga pants. Yes, can you wear those every day. I'm like. I do. Yes. She literally does. <laughs> yes. If you know Brittany. I already do. Think do you have jeans? Do you own any jeans? Yeah, totally. They have huge holes in them. I don't know that I've ever seen you well. in jeans. You have. Well, okay. I'll show you pictures. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, there's proof. So, I hope you feel awkward and uncomfortable like we do. <laughs> but this is awesome. And I, I have to tell you, like, go have, like, a really awkward conversation with your girlfriends about sex because... Brittany and I were literally talking that in one of the breaks that we were like getting teary, like hearing about our friends' stories and like hearing everything that they've been through. And just, we just love you guys so much. I just love I you guys. Love you. You're the best. And I'm so glad that you shared. Thank you. I know this was super awkward and now we know way too much about each other. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say that this stays in this room, but this is actually going out to like four people. <laughs> And we're all right here. So. All of my listeners are in this Shoot. room. <laughs> so thanks for listening. This was awesome. If you have any questions, leave me a comment, a message, whatever. And if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. Leave me a little comment, a little note to let me know whether you hate me or you love me. I want to hear it all. I love you guys. Have a great week and praying for you. See you next week. Bye-bye.